Hi, welcome to Cheltenham Chat, episode three. And the weeks are just absolutely flying in. Now, I can't believe this is third video already. Just looking back at last week for a second, American Mike was, uh, I think most people would tell that I was most impressed with him last week. And uh, the sectional timing column by Simon Rowland seemed to back that up. His time was very good. Even allowing that the other races were over hurdles, he was a lot faster than the other races. And he won, like I say, with two gears in hand. So um, there is a big possibility that American Mike's run a huge race at Down Royal last week. Getting on to this week, there are three horses who I've seen quirks in, but have definite, definite Cheltenham claims should they get those ironed out. The first of those is Three Stripe Life, who utterly bolted in last week head and chest and that was despite a quite indifferent round of jumping he he made a couple of sketchy novice mistakes and um, he seemed to fall out with Davy Russell at the last as well but he won easily and if they can iron out the jumping problems he's going to go to Cheltenham in whatever race he goes in with a decent chance my worry was three stripe life is he seems to have a mind of his own and it sometimes doesn't seem like it's on racing. Last season he lost the champion bumper. Before the race had been run, he nearly put Jack Kennedy over the rails. He played up really badly and his race was over before he went to the start. In the big races you need everything going your way and three stripe life finished fourth in that bumper which was an astounding run considering his race was run before he before he started and in this race he seemed to go to his left as it came they came to the end of the home straight like he thought he was going and um, back to the paddocks and this is the sort of quirk that is going to cost three stripe life if, in a environment like Cheltenham with a big crowd if he does show some sort of kink in his armour it's going to cost him a big race because the engine's there and the price is very very decent as well it's all about whether three stripe life is gonna lose the race in his head before the race is run he's a he's a very good prospect and i'm sure gordon elliott will be working hard maybe a hood maybe blinkers but it's stopping me from backing him but he's definitely got a huge engine and a lot of ability. It was fairly similar with Jinto. Jinto's a horse that I've heard so much about. And I probably, because I hear so much about him, sort of expect more than what the horse can give. Because he's big and he's raw. He's probably a chaser being put into bumpers and hurdles races. He won easily. Running away really and the further he went, the better he looked. So what was wrong with Jinto for me? Well, this running out to the right before his hurdles isn't going to do him any good in a in a graded grade one race. I thought he looked all over the Albert Bartlett horse. He's still a big price for the Albert Bartlett at twenty five to one. But I don't want to see him giving lengths away running out to his right every time he goes to jump a hurdle because that's not going to win win him an Albert Bartlett no matter how strong a steer he is. It'll be interesting to see where he goes next. Um, Gordon Elliott's quite often taken a horse down, I think it's to Limerick or Cork, on the 26th of December. He usually takes his best staying novice hurdler down there. So uh, it'll be interesting to see where Gento goes next. But maybe softer ground will iron out the running to his right at his hurdles. But if they can iron that out, Gento's got... I mean, this looks like a, a gold, gold cap horse to me. A long way out, obviously. I think he's got unbelievable ability, this horse. But he's not showing it on the track. And I realise that he's got three wins out of four when I'm saying that. But he has slightly disappointed me from the home reports I hear uh, to what I'm seeing on the track. You'll find the last horse probably a bit strange. Because it's Chantry House. 
Now, you can't rate the Chantry House race at all. Chantry House had a schooling session, really. I mean, he's absolutely thrashed the big breakaway, which, if you look at the pure form of the race, means that he's, you know, better than Monkfish, etc. But you can't take that literally when the horse that he's beaten is an absolute dodgepot and um, puts it in if he wants to put it in. And uh, if he doesn't feel like it, then he just throws in an absolute stinker and... He's thrown in an absolute stinker here and you can't tell what Chantry House has done. This is perhaps the problem with Nicky Henderson in that he will look for races like this. He will point to his Cheltenham record and say that, you know, it's worked for him over in the past. I think in the past, uh, looking for the easier races, he always knew what he was coming up against. He could work out the form. But these Irish horses, you've got no form line into them. And if you don't know what you're up against and you're putting your horse into easy, easy fights, it's like a boxer who's never been hit before. When he goes into the top level race, is he going to be mentally tough enough to take it? So clearly Chantry has jumped really well and he will go to the gold cap, I'm sure. And he'll have a chance, but I think he needs to face some better rivals. And uh, that worries me because will, he, will Nicky Henderson just keep him away from decent rivals? Other decent winners over the weekend were you tread, Mr Incredible and Eric Bloodaxe. They all need to show that again in a higher level race for me before I would be thinking about a Cheltenham bet on them. And I know that other videos have got lots and lots of bets up already and that I've got none. But well, as I said in the video last week, we're only going to have seven or eight bets and when you're firing that few bullets then they're precious bullets and uh, I'm not seeing anything. I will say that if I was going to have a bet at the moment for Cheltenham it would definitely be American Mike in the bumper because I know he's going to go there. I was mightily impressed with his win and the eight to one with Ladbrokes and uh, Coral is, is definitely what I would be looking for. To back him, I think he's probably an 11 to 2, 6 to 1 shot, so he's, he's a little bit of value. He'd be the one I'd be looking at. I, I would expect that he'll be the horse that Gavin Lynch will put up tomorrow. I can't be sure. He'll definitely put a, a sh shorter than 10 to 1 shot up, I would think, and I would think it probably will be American Mike. Um, other races to look at over the weekend. My mate Mozzie was impressive. He benefited greatly um, from the faller. I don't know if he's quite got the speed to win over two miles at Cheltenham and that he may have to go up into the Ballymore. It's, it's very difficult to rate these novice hurdlers at the moment when you know the likes of Kilcrat, Sir Gerhard, etc. have still come out. I, I think one that people are missing is perhaps Dysart. Dynamo as well so they, they all have to come out yet and it's it's difficult to recommend people getting too involved in other horses until you see how they do on the track Bali Adam I'm not sure he, he deserves a mention on Cheltenham so I, I will be astounded if he wins at Cheltenham in 2022 the way he's jumped on his two appearances so far uh, I don't know why I've got him written down actually because he was absolutely awful at his jumps and it's truly I did expect this because he couldn't jump a hurdle really and um, even Henry de Bromhead doesn't seem to have got him jumping. Florian Porter who's the reigning staying champion I think it's a very big overreaction to push this horse out to 12 to 1. I know his run at Panchestown probably disappointed people but was this run that bad? I know he's uh, fallen but it was it's not like him to fall I thought he was in the process of running a good race you never know with these fallers if it affects their confidence after I thought it was just a one off and I think 12 to 1 is quite a reasonable price on Florian Porter I think he would have won although no one really knows on to a couple of horses finally that I just don't know where they fit into the Cheltenham picture. Captain Guinness was impressive. A notebook took advantage of Sam Crow, sort of throwing the towel in, really. But 
when you look at Captain Guinness's impressive performance, you have to temper that against the fact of do you think the source will beat Shiskin and Ergamine and put the kettle on? Because that's the division he's in. Where else does he go? So when I'm making a video like Cheltenham Chat, I'm not just looking at the ability of these horses and where do they fit in. Of course I'm looking at where their targets could be and what races could they win next time out. But in terms of Cheltenham Chat, where does Captain Guinness, who beat like a dodgepot and Felix Desji and an overrated horse in Andy Dufresne, where does he fit into the champion chase picture? Does beating Sam Crow, who just chucked the towel and Mark Notebook down as a Chel Cheltenham horse, because he's never looked like a Cheltenham horse, he's always run poorly at Cheltenham. So when I'm deciding what I want to see in a Cheltenham horse, then I've got to think what race could they win at Cheltenham and where do they fit into the picture. At the moment, I'd say that Three Stripe Life and Jinto and Chantry House were the horses that I would have thought going forward were most likely to contest at Cheltenham and, and have a chance. And like I've said, if, uh, if they iron out the, the kinks in Three Stripe Life and Jinto, I think they'd definitely go to Cheltenham with big, big chances. It's whether they can or not. The final race to talk about. I thought Tehupu was impressive, but where where he fits into the champion hurdle picture or any other picture is, is difficult. Yes, he was impressive. He beat Colixlos, who I thought was a fortunate winner of the triumph. I, I will maintain forever that Sana here was a better horse and just didn't go to Cheltenham a fit or a fully wound up horse because why did he wear the tongue tie? And they always said in the Elliot Yard that Colixilus was inferior to Sana here. I thought on the day he won a poorish race and I think he got shown up in this race that he wasn't even going to come second. Where Tehupu fits in is difficult to assess at the moment. Five-year-olds tend to have a hard time in their second season over hurdles. I'm not convinced he's good enough to take on the likes of Honeysuckle, etc., especially giving her seven pounds. So at the moment, those three horses that I talked about at the start, Three Stripe Life, Jinto and Chantry House, are the most likely Cheltenham horses from this week. Next weekend, we have um, the November meeting at Cheltenham, the Paddy Power meeting, and um, hopefully we'll get some clues from that. And hopefully we'll have some exciting racing. I may do a preview video if I fancy a couple of horses enough to put a video up. Then it'll be up on Friday night. Thanks so much to everyone who's watching Cheltenham Chat at the moment. We're, we're getting nearly the viewing numbers of a thousand per week, which is really good for my videos. We are still a small channel. I try to be as honest and as transparent as I can be. All the videos are there. I honestly have put the bets off. The videos are there to prove it. There's no skullduggery. The prices are available and the, the stakes are on all the videos. So going forward, I hope you all have a good meeting at Cheltenham over the weekend. And if you have any potential bets that you want to talk about, put them in the comments. There was no silly comments last week from the certain individuals, so hopefully we can continue that and we can have proper discussions on the on the channel. And I'll pose you one question before I go, um, because looking at last year's festival, if things had been different, and um, we can talk about that all we want, but the fact is that if if things had been different, Calantra House would have actually put out the most winners at the Cheltenham Festival last year. Because he would have had six and Willie Mullins and Henry de Bromhead would have had five each. But do you think Sir Gerhard would have won the champion bumper if he'd come out of Calantra House? That's a question that hypothetically has been doing my head in for the six months since the race. And I think you can all see what I'm getting at. But when you think about it like that, you can put your comments below. Do you think Sir Gerhard would have won the champion bumper if he'd gone 
to that race from Calantra House and Kilcrat had gone from Clos Sutton. So I'll leave you with that. It's 15 minutes now. Hopefully you've stayed and watched the entire video. Thanks for watching. Have a great week and I'll be back to you next week. Bye for now.